how's it going? It's Elena. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm bringing you guys another episode of Buzzed In, which is a preparatory series. I've been doing my channel for like well over three years now. It's been a hot minute. Basically showing you different apartments in New York and talking about the different neighborhood and ways of decorating. And today I'm excited because we're gonna go see my friend Vivian's apartment. I met Vivian through the beauty of the internet. And I was like, your place looks sick. Can I? And thankfully she said yes. So we're heading to Morningside Heights to see her sick apartment that she shares with her partner and her greyhound, Jellybean, who you'll get to meet. Vivian's super cool. She's this badass like PhD student getting her degree in biology and also has incredible style and is a fashion creator online. So truly a gal who can do it all, which we love. And she lives in Morningside Heights, which is basically upper west side, kind of near Columbia. Cause her partner's going to Columbia right now. And I think it's a cool perspective for any potential undergrad or grad or PhD students out there uh, learning a bit more about the local area. And as usual, I love to do a little history lesson. She's brief, but let's, let's learn a little bit more about the history of Morningside Heights. So if we're going all the way back in history, like all land found in the US, it was originally native land. Manhattan Island was originally purchased for next to nothing by Peter Minui in 1626 from the Lenape tribes. But we're gonna fast forward quite a bit. So the history of Morningside Heights is really closely linked with that of Columbia University. Columbia came to be in New York in 1814 when college administrators applied for state funding and they were actually given a plot of land in Midtown, but then they eventually moved to Morningside Heights in 1897. Before the university came to this area, it was predominantly home to Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and African Americans. And you can still feel a tension in this area between the local communities and the Ivy League presence and its major contribution to the gentrification of the neighborhood. Throughout the years, Morningside Heights became a hub for cultural and artistic and academic activities, and it attracted a lot of writers and artists and intellectuals that really contributed to the cultural vibrancy of this community. Morningside Heights also played a role in various social and political movements, like during the 1960s, the neighborhood was a center for anti-Vietnam war protests, and Columbia University became a focal point for student activism. And today, this neighborhood is very vibrant and culturally significant with its educational institutions, historical landmarks, and diverse community. Before we head over, if you were wondering, Elena, where is that incredible jewelry from, let me tell you. Today's video is sponsored by Majuri, which I'm so excited about. I've worked with them throughout the years and they're just an incredible jewelry brand with such cool pieces. If you're unfamiliar with Majuri, they've been around since 2015 and they're basically taking fine jewelry and turning it into an everyday occasion, which we love. And I got a few new pieces, which I wanna show you guys, some of which I'm wearing right now. I'll take you guys on a little bit of a jewelry haul of sorts. First up, this might be one of my favorite pieces. It's the heirloom ring in sky blue topaz. It has 14 karat gold and topaz just happens to be my birthstone. So when I saw this, I was like, I need her. She is so stunning. It's so pretty. I don't always wear jewelry with color like this, like stones, but I think this might be the most beautiful rings I own now. Then we've got the double diamond stacker right here. As you can see, also 14 karat gold. I feel like if there's any dudes watching out here, this is a great gift for the ladies. She is so elegant and dainty and so pretty. And then we have my cool pyro large hoops here with this cool like kind of triangular design, kind of everyday gold earring to have on, but just like a little bit more interesting than your classic hoop. And I also got the Balanced Terra coin charm, which I paired with the round box chain necklace, which is also 14 karat gold. And it just hits perfectly. Again, I feel like it's one of those like staple everyday pieces. These are a few of my favorite, but there's definitely so much more online on the Majuri website. And so if you're looking for some fun pieces for yourself or just some holiday gifting for your loved ones, Majuri's got you covered. Obviously all of these will be linked down below. So there's some of my new favorites in my little jewelry circulation. Thanks again to Majuri for sponsoring this video. And on that note, let's head on over to Vivian's apartment and go see your space. Let's go. Hi, welcome to my one bedroom apartment in Morningside Heights. I'm Vivian and- This is Jelly Bean. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Vivian, I am 25. I work part-time as a content creator, but my full-time job is actually being a PhD student in biomedical science, and the apartment is $2,100, but split between two people. So this is our really long entryway. I decorated it obviously with my Greyhound merch. We won in an auction donating to the Greyhound Rescue Agency that we got Jelly Bean from. This is a list of all of the sumo wrestlers that are in a sumo competition when we were visiting Japan. And they just randomly gave us this poster and it really reminds me of a good trip. 
it might not be big to everyone's standards, but for Manhattan especially, this is a huge living room. I take a lot of my content in here as well. And we also have our dining table here, which is really nice because we get to host a lot of friends. I want to know about this lamp. This is an Urban Outfitters lamp, actually. And it's always uh, a conversation starter because it's such a state piece. This piece right here, I bought it on eBay. I really did not mean to bid the amount that I bid. <laughs> we have it here now, that's the, that's the important thing. I really like it. It's obviously done in the traditional Chinese watercolor style. It's definitely not authentic. I'm still moving around and probably not settled in this apartment forever. I didn't want to have anything too pricey in my apartment, especially my parents have a lot of our more valuable like Chinese calligraphy pieces at home. And I know they're gonna keep those safe for me. We're a huge reading household, so we have just all of our books here. And to my left a little bit is my National Geographic collection. A little tidbit about younger Vivian, she really wanted to be a National Geographic explorer. When she, and so when I was in college and I was starting out in my first ever apartment, I started collecting National Geographics. I like the feeling of having them here. It feels like they've been with me for so long at this point that they'll probably just keep going with me wherever I move. So here's our little display case. Wherever we travel, we always try to spot Jelly Bean. This is from a hostel in Hokkaido that I stayed in. This is the couch living area. Usually my dog is right here. This coffee table, I always get a lot of questions about. I actually DIY'd it. I got the base off Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks and then I bought a bunch of spray paint on Amazon and I spray painted it pink and it represents a phase of my life where I was just very into DIY. I do a lot of ceramics. It's probably my main hobby right now. I made this pot earlier in the year. I really like working with my hands. I just wanted to do something that required less, you know, sitting down on the computer and thinking and more, boring things that are outside of my nine to five job. I collect a lot of vintage lamps, all bought on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> and this little guy, my partner studies salamanders and brain evolution in salamanders. In addition to having a lot of dog merch, have a lot of salamander merch. <laughs> so this mirror is actually not a real mirror. It's one of those fake mirrors and it used to be from a dance studio that went out of business. Just drove to the Bronx and loaded it up in the back of a car and brought it home. Um, it's just a fun piece to open up the space, I think. Cool, what did you search to find it? Out of business dance studios are where you're supposed to look. I hope that dance studio is doing okay. I hope they're doing fine now, but thank you for the mirror. <laughs> All right, well, this is the hallway leading to all of our other rooms. We actually recently got this rug right here from my favorite vintage store in Montreal, and it's handmade textiles. Her shop is called The Little Shop, if you want to check it out. This is our little kitchen. It's probably my least favorite room, just because I wish there weren't so many walls or I wish I had more counter space, but I really love cooking and I make it work. A really important part of my cultural identity is to make Chinese food. So I cook a lot of Chinese food in here. It's definitely very important for me to continue on those recipes. Here we have another scroll. I think that if I had endless money and probably too much free reign on eBay, the entire house would be covered up in these little scrolls. Here is our bathroom. My favorite part about this is the fact that in the morning, we actually have really, really bright sunlight in this room. I love taking showers in the sunlight. Welcome to my bedroom. I wanted to keep this room really simple because I really don't do anything besides sleep in here. Jelly Bean is on the bed right now. She's cute and she gets away with it. As you can see, having fans is a common theme in the apartment. I really didn't want a headboard or a traditional bed, so I have a platform bed and I wanted to take up this space with this giant fan piece. The duvet is from Hay. I've really been experimenting with playing with my bed sheets more because it is the only source of color. On the side of the bed, we have this cartel bedside table, which I've been wanting for years and I finally just bit the bullet and bought it. I made this little cup. It matches with the vase that you saw outside. I also made a bunch of these prints a couple years back. This little jelly bean replica was made by my friend Katie for my birthday. So this print I got when I visited the Moreau Museum in Barcelona. About the frame, I think I got this online for probably $10. It adds to the room without being too much. 
So this dresser hides a lot of my clothes. On top here is just a bunch of random jewelry. My sandy bows that I wore to our show this year. I like displaying a lot of my jewelry too because accessories and what people wear is really telling of their personality. Where do you put all your clothes? This is my dirty little secret. <laughs> My closet is kind of filled with everything I own, not just clothes. I have all my art supplies here, and then I stuff all my luggage with the previous season's clothes up top. This one, we just don't talk about. Where's your boyfriend put clothes? In the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Vivian, I am 25 and I live in Morningside Heights. This building is actually owned by Columbia, which is why we have relatively cheap rent. My first passion has always been art. As you've seen in my apartment, I love painting. I used to do a lot of drawing, and now I really focus a lot of my energy in pottery. A really common question I get is how I balance the two aspects of my life, and I really like using the analogy of Hannah Montana because <laughs> she lives this double life as I keep my two kind of worlds very separate. I'm working in the lab every day and I'm eventually trying to write my thesis on the other side of my life. I've always really been into fashion and then when I moved to New York, it made a lot of sense to start taking Instagram a little bit more seriously. I'm very grateful to be involved in the fashion sphere in New York because it's so unique. Seeing how other people dress and express themselves really inspires me. I like just having a house where it seems lived in and it has a lot of your own stuff um, that speaks to your personal style or, or what you like or your experiences. I really like collecting things, especially vintage pieces. And a lot of my decor is from Facebook Marketplace or it's from vintage shops or it's from travels. Anything that reminds me of a life lived. As someone who was born Chinese and who really identifies with that part of my culture, I wanted to bring in pieces that reminded me of Chinese art and historical art and I feel like it just makes the space feel a lot more me. I never want to forget where I'm from. Morningside Heights is on the border of Harlem. When I go out the door, it's a mixture of grad students who go to Columbia. I really enjoy the area. I like the fact that I get to you know, hang out and then come home to a very quiet spot. I love the fact we live across Riverside Park and it's a great spot for Bean to live as well because she gets to run around in the morning and just have fun and meet a lot of other dogs. We don't get a lot of tourists and it just feels very homey. Like every 16 year old girl, probably I watched Sex and the City and I watched Gossip Girl and I wanted to move to New York so bad, but it's definitely a lot different to what you see online. I've always told everyone who wanted to move to New York that the first few months is going to be really difficult. When I moved here, I obviously leaned heavily on my online presence and I made friends through that. Try to do something new, you know? You've moved to New York for a reason. Like, Take a class if you want. And that's the beauty of living in New York is that truly you can find someone who's into anything. You can have the most absurd hobby or interest and you'll find someone who enjoys doing it as much as you do. Yeah.